look at the uh, real meaning of mon at sometimes of the year particularly during a particular season or in the arabian sea is blowing from the southwest to northeast whereas during winter the wind is blowing in exactly opposite direction that is blowing from northeast to southwest so to indicate this directional shifting of blowing of wind and this directional shift of wind flow brings marked change in the weather condition in the indian subcontinental landmass so to indicate this direction of prevailing wind it was used the term monsoon now if we try to find the origin of the term monsoon then there was two theories one theory or one proposal said that the term monsoon is derived from the malayan word that is monsoon and it means season the other school they found in the ancient literature or in the ancient uh, writings that the term was used by the sailors particularly the arab arabian sailors who sail their ships in the arabian sea for business so during this sailing of the ships by the arabian sailors they found an abnormal event is happening in the arabian sea throughout the year the arabian sailors found that seasonally the direction of the prevailing wind is changing during summer the prevailing wind direction is towards northeast winter the wind is flowing exactly opposite in direction that is from northeast to southwest so accordingly the sailors have to adjust their navigation now this exact 180 degree directional shifting or directional or uh, reversal of wind that is known as monsoon so what we thought in general that monsoon means uh, heavy rainfall lots of clouds a dark patchy uh, humid weather condition that is not exactly the literal meaning so monsoon means the reversal of wind flow in sensu stricto term the reversal happened in exactly 180 degree but the means around the world then only in the south southeast asia and in particular only the india and surrounding continental land masses that is the place where we actually found this 180 degree directional shifting or directional reversal of wind flow during the entire time so at one season wind is flowing from southwest and and another season wind is flowing from northeast so 
apart east asia or apart from india and its surrounding landmass in other areas of the world there was no sensu stricto shifting of wind flow at 180 degree during different times of the year by noticing this things one meteorologist uh, his name is newold he proposed that in most of the uh, places of the world like the united states of america uh, northern australia west africa there the shifting of directional shifting of wind occurs at an angle of nearly 120 degree so previously if we strict to the definition of monsoon that is directional shifting occur at 180 degree then these areas apart from india or apart from southeast asia all the areas of the world those areas fall under the term as pseudo monsoon because in those areas 180 degree reversal of wind does not occur so after looking this new world modified the definition of monsoon and nowadays it is thought that the term monsoon was used to indicate the seasonal variation of wind in which the direction of wind changes at least 120 degree so now the other places comes under the term monsoon now if we look at the factors which affect monsoon then dominantly there are three factors which can affect the phenomenon or the directional shifting of wind that is monsoon the first factor which affects is the latitudinal condition of any area depending on the distance from the equator and depending on at which uh, pressure belts it the region or the place is occurring that will govern the directional shifting of many of the trade winds or the easterlies or westerlies so depending on the position of the continent or depending on the position of the place the directional changing will occur throughout the year second is the altitude you know that basically monsoon means directional shifting of winds so the effect of this wind particularly when the wind is coming from the uh, ocean areas that is the ocean wind that brings lots of water vapor within it now when these water vapor reach wind is getting any kind of restriction then it will go up form clouds and brings lots of rainfall so the effect of altitude plays a vital role for precipitation because until or unless there will be no restriction to this moving wind there will be almost nothing or almost uh, negligible precipitation occurs in those areas and the third factor that is the pressure and winds so as i already told that 
pressure and direction of surface winds plays an important role and the depending on the variation in pressure and which hemisphere it is occurring the cyclonic disturbances the tropical cyclones that will play a huge role in the directional shifting of wind to bring monsoon in the continental landmass areas now if we look at the mechanism by which monsoon is occurring in certain places of the world that is where at least 120 degree directional shifting or directional change of wind is found in the entire year that directional shifting may be done due to three reasons the first is the differential heating and cooling of land and weather second is the shift of intertropical convergence zone that is the shift of the maximum receiving insulation area and the third mechanism is the upper air circulation or often it is known as arrow logical circulation of uh, wind now the first point the first mechanism by which directional shifting of wind can happen that is the differential heating and cooling of land and water bodies now this theory this thermal concept of the origin of monsoon was first proposed by Halle and he published his thermal concept in a renowned journal in the year 1686 according to Halle the differential seasonal heating of continental and oceanic areas is the main reason which brings the change in directional shifting of surface wind now what happens in this way during summer when the sun rays falls directly in these areas then the continental landmass that will heat more rapidly compared to the oceanic areas compared to the aquatic areas so as the land part is heated up more quickly so there forms a low pressure zone because after getting heat from the uh, continental landmass the wind becomes light and that will move upward so this vacant place is now filled up by the wind coming from the relatively cold oceanic areas and over the oceanic part there forms a high pressure areas because the water needs more energy to uh, increase its temperature by one degree centigrade uh, that is known as its heat capacity so as the heat capacity of water is very high so the same amount temperature which cause increase in temperature in the continental landmass areas that may not be sufficient to increase the 
temperature of the water bodies by 1 degree centigrade. So, in the land areas, there forms a low pressure zone, whereas in the oceanic parts over the water body, there forms a high pressure zone. So, along the surface, wind is moving from high pressure zone to lower pressure zone, that is from oceans to uh, land areas. Similarly, during winter times, as the heat capacity of water is very high, so water can retain a lot of heat for long time. In contrast, the continental landmass during winter time, they can readily release their heat and becomes cold. So, the pressure system becomes opposite during winter time as the water is relatively more hot so there forms a low pressure zone and by radiating the heat from the surface the continental landmass becomes more cool so there forms a high pressure zone so now during winter the wind is blowing from high pressure zone to low pressure zone that is from continental land part area to the oceanic area along surface. So you can see due to this differential heating of continental landmass areas and the oceanic water bodies there is a directional shift of wind found to occur in these areas. Now, this phenomena is more or less similar to the land and sea bridge concept. The difference of this land sea bridge concept and the monsoon concept is that in land sea bridge concept, the phenomena, the reversal of wind occurs within a very short period of time, within a time interval of 24 hours. So it is not a very prolonged event, but in case of monsoon, the system is more stable and the incident occurs for a more longer period of time, that is almost six months, wind is blowing from ocean to land area and in the next six months wind is blowing from land to sea area. So the phenomena is more vast, more prolonged covering a much uh, longer period of time. Now this thermal concept of monsoon which is initially proposed by Halley is later supported by many of the world renowned uh, geographers and meteorologists and they found that this uh, seasonal change of surface wind direction can occur where the Landmass covers a very large area and it gets uh, intense heat during summer and immediately this landmass is surrounded by some oceanic body that is a large body of water. Uh, until or unless the landmass is surrounded by a large body of water this directional shifting may hardly occurs. The second mechanism by which monsoon can take place, it is proposed by Skerhag, a German meteorologist in the year 1948. According to Skerhang, the 
change in uh, directional shifting of wind is mainly uh, occur due to the shifting in the position of ITCZ that is the intertropical convergence zone. Now, what happens that we know that our planet, that is Earth, is tilting about 23 degree in its own axis. So our Earth's axis is not uh, exactly vertical. Now, due to this axial tilting of Earth axis, different hemisphere of Earth came close to the insulation energy during different years of time. And that is why um, the temperature variation is found to occur at different times of the year in a particular hemisphere. So when the northern hemisphere is facing the sun directly, then in the northern hemisphere there is summer. In contrast, the southern hemisphere is far away from the sun rays. So in southern hemisphere then occurs winter. Oppositely, when the southern hemisphere facing the sun directly then at southern hemisphere it occurs summer and in northern hemisphere there occurs winter now depending on this differential heating of different hemisphere of the earth during different times all the pressure belts they are also shifting their positions so the zone of maximum insulation that is where maximum amount of incoming solar radiation received at the earth surface that position is also shifting during northern hemisphere summer the zone of maximum insulation shifting towards north whereas during southern hemisphere summer the zone of maximum insulation shifting towards southern hemisphere so we may find two types of equator one is the geographical equator that is always lie around zero degree at the middle portion of the earth another is the meteorological equator now only in very certain times these two equators the geographical equators and the meteorological equators that is the um, equator defined in terms of uh, weather conditions that is the equator which receives maximum insulation now geographic equator is fixed the position of geographic equator is fixed but as the zone of maximum insulation is shifting its position depending on the axial tilting of r so the position of meteorological equator is also shifting its position so at some times the meteorological equator or you can say the meteorological uh, ITCJ that is shifting its position more towards northern hemisphere and at some times this meteorological equator shifting more towards southern hemisphere so depending on this the intensity of heat distributed over the earth surface that will also change from one season to another season during the entire year and also the 
pressure zones or the pressure belts that also shift their positions across the latitudes. So, if we just simply observe this area, say for example, uh, 5 to 10 degree uh, northern hemisphere areas, this area, when the insulation falls directly over the geographic equator, then our meteorological equator is almost parallel uh, with the geographic equator. Now, one question may arise into your mind that here the blue line is the uh, meteorological equator and this meteorological equator is showing some curved nature. It is not straight. And that occurs due to the distribution of continental landmass and oceanic bodies because earth is not homogeneous. So due to the this inhomogeneous nature of the earth surface, the uh, meteorological equator is showing these kinds of curved nature. But you can see that during this time, more or less, the geographic equator and the meteorological equator are superimposing each other. So, one area, say for example, uh, Chennai, which is mostly occurring around 10 degree uh, north, during this time, it will face a wind is blowing from northeast to southwest. That is the trade wind, which is blowing towards the equator. Now, during summer in the northern hemisphere, when the meteorological equator shifting more towards Tropic of Cancer, and due to this shifting of meteorological equator, now the wind in the Chennai that is facing a different kind of flow because now it is occurring in the meteorological southern half with respect to this meteorological equator. So during this time as the meteorological equator moves more close to the Tropic of Cancer, so now there is a different direction of wind flow is evidenced in these areas, in these low latitude northern hemisphere areas. So you can see that due to this differential shifting of pressure bales at different latitudinal conditions over the year, the regions of the art will face different wind movement pattern at different times. The third reason or the third uh, mechanism by which the uh, monsoon can be explained or monsoon can be occurred that is the upper air circulation or aerological concept now according to this concept when the seasonal variation of wind is occurring in the surface conditions then there forms some low pressure zones and high pressure zones in the surface and along the surface wind is moving from high pressure zone to low pressure zone areas now at the same time if we look at the upper part of the atmosphere then there we found a opposite movement of wind opposite means the direction what is occurring in the surface 
with respect to that opposite movement is found to occur in the upper part of the air so above the low pressure zone in the surface in the upper atmosphere there occurs a high pressure zone and in the surface where there is high pressure zone aloft there is a low pressure area so aloft at the upper part of the atmosphere wind is blowing just opposite to the direction of the surface wind so aloft the low pressure zone there forms a divergence zone and aloft the high pressure zone there forms a convergence zone now the change in direction of winds mainly at the surfacial condition due to the uh, differential heating of the land and oceanic bodies that also brings change in the upper air circulation say for example if we consider a situation where one area is having a low pressure zone suppose this is the equator condition where low pressure zone exists at certain period of time during the year and uh, suppose this is the tropic of capricorn where there occurs a high pressure zone at certain period of time then with changing in insulation the pressure zone shifts their position because the uh, itcj or the meteorological equator shifts its position now say this is occurring at 0 degree latitude and this is about at 30 degree south say during northern hemisphere summer this meteorological equator will shift further towards north so now at this condition a high pressure zone might exist all the wind bears pressure zones they will shift northward similarly in this tropic of capricorn the high pressure zone is now shifted and probably a low pressure zone exists in the surface condition so you can see that pressure region in these two region also shifts along with the shifting of meteorological equator along the earth surface with continuation with this shifting position of pressure belts at the surface the upper air winds the upper air pressure zones also shift their position so aloft this high pressure zone now exists a low pressure zone where convergence will occur and along this low pressure zone aloft occurs a high pressure zone where divergence will occur so you can see that the directional change in surface wind brings the change in direction of upper air circulation now for upper air circulation instead of using the term reversal meteorologists prefer to use the term variation that is the variation in wind direction throughout the air now this upper air circulation of wind is probably controlled by the annual oscillation of temperature and in it is mostly found in the um, upper part of the troposphere close to the tropopause and in the lower part of the stratosphere by radio soundings of the upper atmosphere it was found that this kind of distinct monsoonal circulation 
at upper rear was found at an altitude of about 21 kilometer so by radio soundings the uh, directional variation of uh, wind movement in the upper air that was noted at an altitude of 21 kilometer which is the height of the lower stratosphere so these are the three mechanisms by which the uh, planetary winds not only the surface winds as well as the upper air winds which is found in the uh, upper part of the troposphere and also in the lower part of the stratosphere that will change their movement direction within an entire year Now coming to the monsoon systems of the world. Now, as I already told you that use the term monsoon in a sensu stricto meaning that is exactly 180 degree reversal of wind direction, then in the entire world, there is only one place in which these uh, directional reversal of wind is found to occur that is in the uh, asian landmass particularly in the southeast asia so whenever we are going to study monsoon in detail we take the example of this asian monsoon as our studied topic now in asian monsoon system it includes basically uh, two subsystems within the entire uh, monsoon systems what happens that during the winter the intense cooling of the huge landmass of Asia that leads to uh, some amount of high pressure zone because uh, the temperature, the insulation received in this huge landmass area is low compared to the uh, surrounding oceans and oceans we know have a high uh, heat capacity and if we look at the uh, distribution of asian landmass then it is surrounded by indian ocean pacific ocean and in the north there is arctic ocean so during winter the landmass of asia it will face or it will evidence a high pressure zone a high pressure systems now there is two system developed in the asian landmass system two high pressure system developed particularly one near the lake baikal in siberia and one in the peshwar Pakistan. Now, the high pressure systems developed in the Lake Boikal in Siberia from this high pressure system, cold, dense wind that will starts to move towards the warmer adjacent oceans in the eastern side so this cold wind is moving along east towards this uh, low pressure system developed in the pacific ocean 
now as this wind is moving at a more or less easterly direction so often this is known as east asian monsoon now this east asian monsoon wind as it is coming from the high pressure area which is developed in siberia so this wind is basically a dry cold wind so almost there is no rainfall in south or southeast china or in mongolia or in this russian land masses so the entire southern russia mongolia this northern part of china that will evidence a dry cold wind during the time of winter and there is almost no precipitation a minute amount of precipitation occurs if um, this dry cold wind goes aloft and becomes dense and precipitation occurs in the form of snowfall but there is no rainfall but when these dry cold wind reach the coastal areas of japan south korea and in this north china border regions then this dry cold wind receive some water vapor from the pacific ocean and after reaching the western coastal areas of japan south korea taiwan there it may bring some amount of rainfall but in a generalistic sense the east asian monsoon which is blowing from the high pressure zone formed in siberia towards easterly towards the pacific ocean that is more or less dry cold wind this is known as east asian monsoon at the same time as i already told you in peshawar there exist another high pressure systems now one interesting thing is the high pressure system develops in siberia that is more strong compared to peshawar but the winds blowing from this high pressure system that will not reach the indian landmass areas that is india pakistan uh, burma bangladesh all these landmass this area is not able to reach this southern part of asia south or southeastern part of asia now why this is so because of the presence of a barrier that is the himalayan mountain range along the northern part of indian subcontinent so the wind is restricted particularly in the central and north asia and that is not able to enter into the indian subcontinental landmass in peshawar another high pressure system develops and from this high pressure system wind is blowing again towards east it will interact with the uh, north south trending assam arakan range and then change its direction and now moving from north west not sorry north east to south west and overall the wind movement from this high pressure system that is from peshawar is towards a southwesterly direction 
uh, I will come into more detail in this uh, Indian um, monsoon in this South Asian part. So the East Asian monsoon, which is mainly found to occur during the winter season, and at that time wind is blowing from the high pressure areas developed in Siberia. From that wind is blowing overall towards east. The wind is generally dry, so there is almost no rainfall, no precipitation in uh, North China, Mongolia, or Southern Russia. But when wind reach the Pacific Ocean, some amount of water vapor is taken into the wind, and some precipitation is found to occur in the western coast of Japan, South Korea, Taiwan, all these areas. But generally, the wind is dry. The second part that is the Southern Asian monsoon. Now, another interesting thing is the East Asian monsoon that is particularly well observed or the effect of monsoon in the north or north central part of Asian landmass that is particularly observed during the months of winter. The summer monsoon in the northern half of Asia that is not so strong that is not felt um, very uh, properly uh, during summer time basically uh, in this East Asian region different kinds of wind movement are found to occur in the upper air, there is a widely fluctuating jet stream at about 40 to 45 degree north is found to occur and a wind also found to occur along the surface from the Pacific Ocean towards the continental landmass in the westerly direction. Uh, previously, this was thought that the wind is blowing uh, from Pacific Ocean towards the low pressure zones in the westerly direction, but later it was uh, found that basically this westerly moving summer monsoon in the northern half of Asia is basically a branch of monsoonal wind coming from Indian Ocean. Now how it is going into the uh, northern part of Asia by crossing the Himalayan mountain range that will detail in this next part. So the second type of monsoon found in Asia that is the southeastern or southern Asian monsoon that is mostly found in the southern part of Asian landmass. Now this southern Asian monsoon is mainly divided into two parts. One is the winter monsoon and one is the summer monsoon. And this monsoonal phenomenon is particularly observed in India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, in these land masses and this is the only example of ideal monsoonal wind movement that is in this part only the ideal change that is 180 degree change in direction of wind is found to occur during summer and winter season so two subsystems is found to occur in this southern part of asia one during the winter and one during the summer during summer wind is blowing from southwest 
and brings loss of moist ocean wind to the continental landmass areas and this moist ocean wind cause a lot of rainfall in contrast during winter the wind is blowing from the continental landmass areas from northeast to southwest and the wind is basically very dry as it is coming from the land areas now going into some detail about this southern asian uh, summer monsoon and winter monsoon so as i already told you the wind during the summer time that is blowing from uh, south east sorry south west to north east now in this entire indian, indian subcontinental landmass in the northern half of uh, india and pakistan there forms a low pressure zone and in contrast the surrounding landmass that is the vast landmass of bay of vast oh, sorry water body of um, bay of bengal indian ocean and the arabian sea there exist high pressure system so wind is blowing from this high pressure ocean bodies to the low pressure system develops in the northern half of indian subcontinent now when wind reach with this uh, ocean water vapor reaches the southern part of the indian landmass because of the shape of the indian landmass this north easterly blowing summer monsoonal wind is divided into two parts one half is blowing along the western coast of india and as this half hits the western ghat mountain range in the western coast of the indian landmass so most of the rain most of the precipitation most of the rainfall is occurring in the coastal areas along the west coast of india so this is a the windward side of this indian coast indian west coast is receiving heavy rainfall in contrast the opposite side of western ghat that is the interior part of the indian landmass in this part the wind flowing into this is almost does not getting any kind of restriction so almost in the inside part of the, or the interior part that is the leeward part of wind there will be almost no precipitation there is a huge um, difference in precipitation observed in the windward side of the western ghat and the leeward side of the western ghats now most of the rainfalls most of the precipitation or most of the activity of this uh, monsoon wind blowing along the western coast of india is flowing from north from south towards north because the movement of wind is restricted is blocked by the occurrence of these western ghats so it starts to move along the western coast from south to north and after crossing these uh, gujarat areas the kambe regions it reaches rajasthan and it ends near about in kashmir where it gets trapped with the himalayan mountain range now this branch of summer monsoon which is flowing along the western coast that will bring lots of rainfalls in the 
कोस्टल एरियाज ऑफ कर्नाटका केरला महाराष्ट्र बट इवन इन गुजरात आल्सो बट देर इज नो रेनफॉल इन राजस्थान ऑल द सेम विंड इज ब्लोइंग ओवर राजस्थान व्हाई दिस इज सो बिकॉज टू गेट precipitation from this moving air it has to be blocked because a moving air by itself cannot bring precipitation until or unless that moving air is blocked by some barrier it will goes up becomes condensed and cool and then only it brings precipitation now in the entire rajasthan the arabulli mountain range that occurs almost parallel to this wind movement tarabulli mountain range is occurring almost uh, trending north northeast to south south west so almost parallel to this moving air moving uh, monsoon air so this water vapor rich monsoon air is not blocked is not trapped by the arabulli mountain range so the entire state of rajasthan that will not evidence any kind of or very negligible amount of rainfall is found to occur in the rajasthan so that is why although rajasthan is evidencing a um, humid summer monsoon air but there was no rainfall but when this monsoon air reached kashmir and here the ains because the monsoon air is trapped by the uh, himalayan mountain range so at the foot hills of kashmir there again some amount of precipitation is found to occur so although the same monsoon air is blowing from along the western coast of india and brings a lots of rainfall along the western coast like the uh, states of kerala uh, karnataka maharashtra gujarat and even in the kashmir but there is no rainfall in the rajasthan and another important event or another important thing of this um, northerly moving branch of summer monsoon air is that most of the rainfall occurs along the windward side of western ghats the leeward side is receive very very negligible amount of rainfall or almost dry but when this northerly moving monsoon air is encroaching through the uh, openings of narmada and tapti river valleys then some amount of monsoon air is blowing along the valleys in a easterly direction and ultimately the easterly moving this monsoon air ultimately reach in the central half of india that is in, in the uh, madhya pradesh so in this regions also there is rainfall is found to occur and ultimately it uh, mix or it meet with the bay of bengal branch and diminishes so one half of the summer monsoon air is moving along the western coast the other half of the summer monsoon air which is moving along the eastern half of indian landmass that is along the bay of bengal so often it is known as bay of bengal branch now when this bay of bengal branch first reach and hits the um, barma coast then again due to the occurring occurrence of high hill range there forms a lots of rainfall and after deflecting from the barma uh, it will take a shift in direction into the westward part north or northwest part it reaches assam 
and we know that in Assam, Jirapunji, there is the place which receives uh, the most amount of rainfall. The place name is Mosinram, which uh, receives an annual average precipitation of about uh, 965 centimeter and that is the highest in the world now why in assam the region receives maximum particular a place which receives this higher amount of rainfall because the position of this place position of mosinam is very unique Mosinam is basically surrounded on all sides by three hillocks. The name of the hillocks are Garo, Khasi, and Jaintia. And due to the enclosingness or due to this uh, surrounding of Mosinam by these hillocks, almost there is no gap through which the uh, monsoon air is blowing to another place but when the monsoon air is reaching Mausindram it gets trapped by the hills so the place Mausindram receives the heaviest rainfall throughout the world In contrast, the another place that is Shillong, which is hardly about uh, 40 km on the northern part of Khasi Hills, there the rainfall amount is drastically reduced. So in Mosindam, which receives almost a thousand centimeter rainfall, annual rainfall averagely. Uh, Shillong, which is occurred about 40 km north, not very far, that receives about uh, 140 centimeter average annual rainfall. So you can see that a drastic difference, drastic reduction in pre precipitation amount within a short distance and the heaviest precipitation in Mausindam is simply because of its geographical occurrence, because of its um, occurrence and it is flanked, Mausindam is flanked by three um, large hillocks. So the winds get trapped inside this uh, place. Now, the other portion of this Bay of Bengal branch that is moving along the uh, Ganga flow path uh, moves towards the northerly direction. Uh, it gets blocked in the uh, Shiva Lakes and Himalayan, Himalayan mountain range. So lots of rainfall occurs in these foothills of Shivali in the uh, northern half of Bengal and then it moves towards uh, west and there is rainfall in Bihar in Uttar Pradesh, Uttarakhand and ultimately it diminishes uh, in Kashmir areas. Now this moving here, yeah, this Bay of Bengal branch which is moving along the uh, Gangetic plain that after reaching the uh, low pressure zone developed in the northern half of the Indian landmass diminishes its movement and it also meets with the uh, easterly flowing 
westerly branch which is moving along the Narmada and Tapi river along Madhya Pradesh. So there are lots of rainfall along the Gangetic plains in Bay of Bengal, in uh, West Bengal, Bihar, Uttar Pradesh, Uttarakhand. If we look at the direction of moving of this Bay of Bengal branch, then again it is blocked by the barrier that is the Shivalik and the Himalayan mountain range in the north and the Asamarakan range in the east. So the southern half of China that is almost remains dry. That is the leeward side of the Bay of Bengal branch. So although the windward side of the Bay of Bengal branch receives a lot of rainfall along the Gangetic Plains, but the leeward side remains dry because this monsoonal uh, wind cannot overcome the barrier of Himalayan mountain range. Similarly, the most of the rainfalls or most of the activity of this Bay of Bengal branch is mostly observed in uh, this Burma areas, but some amount of or some portion of the uh, monsoonal wind of this Bay of Bengal branch can reach along this northeasterly direction towards uh, southern half of China and it reaches the Pacific Ocean and thereafter it is starts moving in a westerly direction towards the low pressure zone formed in the um, central or northern half of um, North Asia. So what I previously told that the, in the summer monsoon wind is thought to uh, blowing from Pacific Ocean towards the uh, Central Asia. Now it is found that this Eastern Ocean Bay of Bengal branch, some amount of wind is moving in a northeasterly direction, reaching the uh, east or southern part of China and ultimately to Pacific Ocean and thereby takes a uh, westerly shifting uh, direction and reaches the uh, low pressure zone developed in the central and north central Asian part. So you can see during summer monsoon lots of rainfall found to occur in the western coast of India and in the interior part of the western Ghats. the region is more or less evidencing lower amount of precipitation and from the Bay of Bengal branch uh, basically this western coast uh, branch is known also as the Arabian branch and the second branch that is the Bay of Bengal branch due to which lots of rains falls in Myanmar, Bangladesh, in Assam, Mosinam is the place which evidence the highest rainfall and all the along the Gangetic Plains. Now, when this uh, summer monsoon air reaches the low pressure system during summer time in the north and northwestern part of uh, Indian landmass, during winter time, as a high pressure system develops in Peshawar, the landmass becomes rapidly cool and high pressure system develops in the uh, north northwestern part of indian subcontinent that is in peshwar so uh, wind starts flowing from this high pressure zone towards the low pressure zone develops in the indian ocean so lots of wind is moving initially in a southeasterly direction and after that it will rotates or change its direction and moving in the south west direction. If we look at the average movement of this wind, then the average movement of this wind is along the southwest wind. 
Now the interesting thing is this southwest winter monsoon wind as it is coming from the landmass areas. So the wind is very dry. So there is almost no rainfall, but the entire Indian landmass is evidencing a cold, dry wind coming from the high pressure uh, zone of Peshwa. So there is no rainfall in most of the places of India. But when this wind is blowing over the Bay of Bengal and takes a directional change towards southwest, after reaching Bay of Bengal, it takes some water vapor within itself. And when it hits the eastern coast of Tamil Nadu, the region around Chennai and this northern half of Sri Lanka, particularly the uh, northeastern coastal areas of Sri Lanka, this wind makes some amount of rainfall in these portions of the coastal areas because that wind now receives some amount of vapor from the Bay of Bengal. So when it hits the continental landmass during its southwest movement in the southeastern coast of India and the northeastern coast of Sri Lanka, that evidence a rainfall during winter time also. So that is why the coastal areas of Tamil Nadu, the eastern coastal areas of uh, India and the northeastern coast of Sri Lanka that evidence twice rainfall during the entire year. One during the summer monsoon and one during the retreating monsoon or during the winter monsoon. So the summer monsoon as I already told you uh, the general flow is from uh, south particularly south west to northeast one parts moving northwards along the arabian sea side along the western coast of india and another part moving towards bay of bengal and reaches the assam myanmar and the gangetic plains and this is happened during summer during winter, the high pressure system develops in the northern, northwestern part of Indian landmass, and high and low pressure system develops in the Indian Oceans. So, wind starts moving from the land to coastal, land to coastal areas, or land to uh, Indian Ocean. And as this is coming from land areas, most of the wind is dry except the eastern coast of Tamil Nadu and the northeastern coast of Sri Lanka evidencing some amount of precipitation during this time. This is known as northeast monsoon or winter monsoon. So you can see a drastic change in land cover depending on this monsoonal wind. So, depending on the monsoonal winds, some areas evidencing a huge water supply in the form of rainfall and immediately after the rainfall, lots of cultivation is found to occur. So, you can see just after the summer, uh, due to the uh, southeast monsoon, the land's areas, the land covers becomes much green because of the uh, high amount of water supply high amount of cultivation is going on in contrast during winter during the time of spring because of the north east monsoonal wind and as it is coming from the landmass so the wind is basically dry so there is no precipitation and uh, you can see the entire land surface looks 
brownish looks very dry almost there is no greenery exist so this uh, seasonal contrast of greenery this seasonal contrast of cultivation is found to occur in indian subcontinental landmass and this is largely dependent on the um, directional change of wind circulation found to occur during two times or during two different seasons of the year and due to that one season it brings lots of rainfall which favors lots of cultivation to be done whereas in other time uh, due to the cold dry wind particularly moving on around these places and due to the lesser supply of water in these ground surfaces the areas does not favor for um, cultivation so that's all that's a brief idea about the monsoon the, what monsoon actually means the mechanism of monsoons and the uh, monsoon which the peoples of asia and particularly the peoples of india uh, they will evidence throughout the entire year thank you